The Spy Who Loved Me takes the Bond series into a very different direction to any of Fermi's previous novels. It bears no resemblance to the 1977 film of the same name, so there is really nothing to compare it to. But is The Spy Who Loved Me any good? The Spy Who Loved Me focuses on a new character by the name of Vivian Michelle, a Canadian woman with a chaotic life, but still one very different to that of James Bond. The book is told from Vivian's perspective, which makes a great change and way of shifting the style from the previous Bond-centric novels. By telling the story in the first person, the reader is perhaps empathetic to Vivian. So by having The Spy Who may be told in the first person already makes it an engaging read. For a sizable chunk of the novel, the novel focuses on Vivian's life. This makes for a big change in style from any of the previous Fleming novels. Initially, there's nothing really at stake and there's no spy antics. However, while the life that Fleming has created for Vivian is essential for later on, however, while the life that Fleming has created for Vivian is essential for later on, at the time, it's at times a bit of a chore to read. None of it is especially exciting or thrilling, but it does build up a new character rather well, so the opening few chapters are a mixed bag. Once the mobsters, Slugsy and Horror arrive on the scene, the story improves greatly. The story gets far more dramatic and dark than I'd ever have thought before reading the book. You start to forget this is even a James Bond novel, and at this stage at least, there's no need for him. Slugsy and Horror are intimidating characters, without James Bond around, they appear very sinister, especially when the story is told in the first person of someone who's far more ordinary than Bond. If anything, this element makes you reassess past Bond adventures to an extent. Without Bond, everything seems darker. Vivian is an especially well-written character during these scenes, having to deal with an impossibly bleak situation and with nobody to help on the horizon. Due to the relative briefness of The Spy Love Me, this segment doesn't last at all long. It lasts long enough to create an impact, but not too long so to become stale and predictable. If anything, Fleming made this book readable by making things unpredictable and more dangerous. Once Bond shows up, the novel improves even more. The build-up to Bond's introduction into the story is absolutely sublime, especially when Bond utters his iconic introductory line, which is far more prevalent in the films. The action is well written and exciting, and despite Bond's introduction into the narrative, things are still tense. Bond's introduction doesn't feel too late or too early, it was perfectly timed, and maximises the amount of sheer enjoyment from reading the novel. And as this novel is told from Vivian's perspective, we do see a different side to Bond, which is very refreshing at this stage of the series. Horror and Slugs are dealt with in brilliant fashion. Just when you think they've been defeated, one of them strikes back, and it's a while before both of them have been well and truly vanquished. The simplicity of the confrontation is fantastic. Had this been widened, it would have lost something along the way. Some of the passages during this section of the novel would have made for a tense and gripping pre-title sequence for a Bond film, but due to Fleming's alleged dislike of the novel, that seems unlikely. Once the danger has subsided, Bond and Vivian hook up, as the title suggested they would do. However, as the threat is gone, the rest of the story feels a bit like padding, and as the novel is fairly brief, the stretched out conclusion doesn't feel earned. Bond leaves rather abruptly, reminding us that he hasn't softened, he's still an assassin at the end of the day. The final few pages are nice as Vivian speaks to the police. The interactions are well written and feel grounded. So that was the spark who loved me. At the time, the novel didn't receive glowing reviews and Fleming himself wasn't overly keen on it. When selling the rights to his Bond novels to the likes of Albert R. Broccoli and Harry Saltzman, Fleming allegedly only sold the title and none of the plot elements. This is why the Spy Who Loved Me film is a very different story indeed, and possibly the first totally original Bond film. However, while Fleming may have disliked The Spy Who Loved Me, I did not. I think it's a refreshing read, the first person perspective working especially well. Vivian is a decently written lead, her character goes through an arc of sorts. The next Bond novel I'll be reading will be On Her Majesty's Secret Service, and I'll see you then. Bye.